especially our mortgage brokers out there, do check out Broker Plus. Uh, Broker Plus is the mortgage brokerage industry's only three-in-one point of sale, LOS, CRM, all-in-one, fully mobile friendly, absolutely user friendly, so amazing. Just click the banner you see on your screen over on your right or right down below and get a demo of Broker Plus. So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau did not pass its own quality control inspection. Now, here's a mouthful. The Quality Management Program at the Division of Supervision Enforcement and Fair Lending, the SEFL, often takes a back seat to overseeing financial institutions' compliance with federal law, according to its November report from the Office of the Inspector General for the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Maybe there's just too many agencies involved in all this stuff. Way too many words there. All right, so what's the problem? Well, the problem is staff turnover, attrition, and a two-year hiring freeze that caused delays in creating quality control reports. Formal processes for following up on and documenting quality control recommendations were also found to be lacking. Now, if you read between the lines on this one with a two-year hiring freeze, it kind of sounds like to me that they're blaming the quality control issues at the CFPB on the past directors, Kathy Kraninger and Mick Mulvaney, you know, Trump's directors. And as you may recall, both Mulvaney and Craninger, who headed the CFPB, thought the CFPB shouldn't have never existed in the first place. So it kind of does make sense. Now, the findings from the Office of the Inspector General for the Fed Board and seemingly keep the Bureau marching in the direction of massive enforcement actions that I keep telling you guys is coming your way. Be prepared. Get this. In one instance, an office implemented a recommendation seven months ahead of the relevant quality control report. That report notes that according to the CFPB officials, a March 2020 SELF technology initiative could alleviate some of the staffing concerns that they have at the CFPB right now. The initiative dubbed the Supervision Technology Initiative will focus on developing data, automation, robotic processing, and machine learning. But the Office of the Inspector General noted that while the technology advancements could lead to eventual automation of some manual quality control activities, SELF should still look into the staffing levels and the structure. Meaning, guys, if you, again, it's a total mouthful here, isn't it? The CFPB needs to be more nimble. What is the job of the CFPB? What is it? It's to root out bad actors in the area of finance, like residential mortgages. Think about this for a second here. The CFPB has been fairly active over its short lifespan, but eventually that's not going to be enough for this version of the CFPB and what they're looking at doing with enforcement. Yet another example of what's to come, guys. <laughs> hits just keep on coming for Zillow, and I think they're all just funny as damn hell. You know, last week I told you that Zillow's gonna be able to easily weather this little storm, right? Well, now it's a tempest. It's a hurricane, and Zillow's infrastructure is starting to bend under the onslaught. This time, it's lawsuits. Yes! Awesome! In the wake of Zillow saying it is getting out of the iBuying business, multiple law firms have launched investigations to see if the portal company misled investors and committed securities fraud. Yes! <laughs> Three days after the announcement, law firm Glancy, Prongy, and Murray LLP, which focuses on shareholder rights and securities law, announced that it was looking into Zillow. The law firm's statement notes that it is exploring possible violations of the federal securities law. The statement goes on to note that Zillow's share price have fallen significantly after the company's iBuying announcement, thereby injuring its investors. Ah, yes. You see, guys, you see, if the Zillow brain trust isn't making making money for its investors, they could actually be breaking the law by breaking their fiduciary. This is what I really want to impress upon consumers and real estate agents out there. I hope you understand that all these iBuyers are publicly traded and must, must, make money for their investors first and foremost. When it comes to the iBuying model, the way to maximize profits is to screw over homeowners. The worse for the homeowner, simply the better the fiduciary is fulfilled. iBuying companies literally have the exact opposite legal obligation to home sellers and buyers as real estate agents do, right? This is the message that agents need to share and share loudly. Also, it's worth pointing out that all the publicly traded companies share the same legal obligation 
obligation to the shareholders, including all the newly minted non-banked mortgage companies that filed IPOs over the past 18 months. Food for thought, right? Question, do you think there might be something a little fishy going on with these recent earnings reports that we've heard from some of these banks? Perhaps there's more than meets the eye, but that might be for a show tomorrow. Hey guys, make it a great day and have an absolutely wonderful week. It's time to kick butt because we're getting really close to turkey time. So let's just really kind of batten down the hatches, right? Let's put the nose to the grindstone and any other cliche you could come up with. Do it this week. Bye.